Tyson Fury is very good at reading the psychology of his opponents, particularly when he's signed to fight them and he's seen them face to face, etc. He's very good at that. And he actually tailors his behavior to try and not necessarily unsettle an opponent, but sometimes to lead them on, sometimes to lull them into a full sense of security. But other times, indeed, he will try and unsettle them and rile them up. But he's very, very good at reading the opponent's psychology. Deontay Wilder, on the other hand, is very, very poor at reading his opponent's psychology. This is not a particularly perceptive individual who can look at an opponent and say, okay, I can see where he's weak psychologically, so I'm going to employ this tactic in the run-up to the fight. Wilder's not good at that. And what makes it worse for Deontay Wilder is he thinks he is good at that. Deontay Wilder thinks he can read his opponents psychologically very well. And the reason why that's such a massive flaw for Deontay is because for lack of a better term, if you've got a dumb person who knows that they're dumb, they're going to stay in their lane. They're not going to have unrealistic expectations. When you've got a dumb person who thinks they're a genius, this is somebody who can become very delusional. This is somebody who can see things which are not there, perceive things which are not actually happening. And that's the category that Deontay Wilder fits into. So, This is a guy who thinks that just about everybody who steps in the ring with him is scared to death. This is a guy who thinks that so many of his rivals are also scared of him. They're absolutely quaking in their boots about his punching power. This is something Deontay says time and time again at press conferences. We've all heard him go into that cringeworthy Steven Seagal whispering voice where he starts talking about how sincere he is and how he says what he means and means what he says, all this kind of stuff. So Deontay's mindset is that of a person who thinks he has his opponent figured out, but he doesn't. That's a problem, okay? Now, Ben Davison, Tyson Fury's former trainer, says that Tyson Fury took something from Wilder in their first fight, psychologically took something from him. And he believes that in the 12th round, that's when it happened. When Deontay Wilder dropped Tyson Fury, believed that the fight was over, only to turn around and see Fury rise up off the canvas. And we saw the video clip of Deontay Wilder's face after he knocked Fury down, and you could tell that he thought the fight was over. But then, out of the corner of his eye, he saw Fury getting up, because he was looking at the crowd and celebrating and all this. At the corner of his eye, he saw Fury getting up and you saw Deontay Wilder's face drop at that moment. He couldn't believe that Tyson Fury got up. And not only did Tyson Fury get up, but he proceeded to actually win the rest of the round and put Deontay Wilder under a lot of pressure. So that moment right there, I think it did have a psychological impact on Deontay Wilder. At the end of the 12 rounds, Fury seemed to be the more animated of the two. Wilder kind of looked a bit dejected, a bit disappointed, maybe a bit relieved. So there was an interesting psychological dynamic between the two fighters after the the bell. Then Deontay Wilder, you know, uh, fought again against Dominic Brazil, knocked Brazil out in one round. He knocked out Luis Ortiz in their rematch. Tyson Fury had obviously beaten Tom Schwartz and struggled a bit with Otto Wallin. And remember what Deontay Wilder said after Fury fought Wallen. He said, see, these guys are never the same after they fight me. Once again, Deontay Wilder's delusional mindset was coming to the surface again, believing that he'd taken something away from Tyson Fury. I didn't think he'd taken anything away from Tyson Fury. Fury's always had an up and down, inconsistent career. You go back and look at his early career. He had good performances. And then he had really poor performances. Consistency was always an issue for him. So having an awkward fight against Otto Wallen, who, okay, he's no Deontay Wilder, but he is a southpaw and he's certainly more technically correct than Wilder. That doesn't necessarily mean that you can look at that fight and say, oh, well, he's got no chance against Wilder. It doesn't work like that. 
Yeah. So Wilder read far too much into that, not just because of Fury struggling a bit, because he, but also because he thought he'd taken something from Fury mentally. Again, this shows you where he can't read opponents very well. He can't read their mental state very well. If he'd actually done his homework on Fury, he would have known that Fury's been inconsistent for years. Fury's a guy who rises to the occasion, as people like to uh, call him in Britain. He's a buzz fighter. He needs to feel fear. He needs to feel as though there's some kind of danger in front of him. That makes him fight to the best of his ability. But that was clearly not something Deontay Wilder had considered. So going into the rematch, had Tyson Fury taken something from Wilder in the first fight? Maybe on a subconscious level, you see, not only is, De see, Deontay Wilder is a very impulsive individual. And with impulsive people, they don't tend to think very deeply because they tend to be in the moment all the time. Now, Tyson Fury is, is somewhat impulsive, but he is, let me say, atypical of impulsive people because he's a very deep thinker. So he's got that impulsive side, but he's also a very, very deep guy, very intelligent Tyson Fury. And with Wilder, as I say, more of a shallow guy, impulsive, not a very deep thinker. So not only does he not understand the psychology of his opponents very well, but he also doesn't understand his own psychology. He doesn't understand what makes his own mind tick on a subconscious level. He doesn't understand his own pathology. So perhaps there were, in retrospect, looking back, some demons that were left in Wilder's head following that 12th round against Fury in the first fight to see a guy rise up off the canvas from one of Wilder's best shots. He hit him with a two-piece, a right-left. Rise up off the canvas and actually stick it on him for the rest of the round. That must have left some kind of psychological impression on Deontay Wilder where he thought, okay, this guy's not like all the others. This guy has a bit more in the heart department than anybody else I've faced before. This guy does have something special. He can rise up. And he kept saying, well, I'm going to, make sure he stays on the canvas this time. And maybe he believed that on some level, but subconsciously, you do wonder. And at the elite level in boxing, you're talking about the most finite amount of difference between winning and losing, both physically, technically, and psychologically. So if we're dealing with reflexes, a split second difference you know, a split second can make the difference between landing a shot or missing a shot or avoiding a shot or getting hit with it. Split second. Same goes for the psychology of the fighters. The tiniest little bit of doubt in the subconscious mind can make the difference between a fighter winning and losing, between a fighter giving the opponent the opportunity to do damage or, you know, not allowing your opponent to get the upper hand. Again, we're talking about the elite level. We're not talking about when one guy is a, a, a superstar elite level fighter and the other guy's a journeyman. No, we're talking about when both guys are at the top level, it is tiny, tiny margins of error, both physically, technically, and psychologically. So did that play any part in Deontay Wilder's loss to Tyson Fury in their rematch? in terms of you know, any kind of psychological baggage. Ben Davison believes so. He thinks that Tyson Fury did get to him to some degree. Um, I think where the psychological aspect comes into play is in the second fight itself, not before the second fight. I mean, there might have been some residual subconscious demons for Deontay Wilder, but I think most of the psychological damage was done in the rematch itself in the ring because Deontay Wilder was shocked to the core of his soul by the way Tyson Fury just set about him from the opening bell. I mean, he attacked him with such confidence and such ferocity. Wilder never saw that coming. Wilder thought that Fury was going to be afraid of his power because this is what Wilder had convinced himself of. Again, he's not good 
at reading his opponents. But to be fair, Tyson Fury is a guy who disguises his, his intentions very, very well. He certainly caught me off guard with those tactics. I did not think he was going to jump on Deontay Wilder the way he did. So he certainly caught me off guard. I think he caught most people off guard. But, you know, be that as it may, Deontay Wilder was caught off guard more than anybody. And going into the third fight, I think there is going to be serious demons for Wilder to try and deal with. And again, this is somebody who, for several years, has been completely delusional. This has been a guy, this is a guy who's not been grounded in reality at all. And when you've got somebody like that, for them to get over a defeat, a beating, like he took against Fury in that rematch, it not only takes a reevaluation of your style, your tactics, but your whole self-image, when you look at yourself in the mirror, after believing you were this killer, after believing that Fury was quaking in his boots, thinking about your right hand, for Fury to come at you, beat you up, not be afraid at all, you're going to have to question yourself. You're going to have to think, hang on, well, I'm not the puncher that I thought I was, or I'm not as intimidating as I thought I was because Fury came out and he put it on me. He wasn't scared of what he saw against Luis Ortiz. He wasn't scared of what he saw against Dominic Brazil. He wasn't scared of what he felt in that 12th round when I dropped him. None of that intimidated him. You see, Wilder had been hanging his hat on that, believing that had intimidated Tyson Fury. He hadn't. Fury wasn't intimidated in the, in the slightest by any of that. Imagine what psychological impact that's going to have on Deontay Wilder. So, yeah, very interesting going into the third fight. If we see it, we know the current situation going on in the world at the moment is uh, uncertain. But if the third fight does go ahead sometime this year, I'm going to be most fascinated to see Deontay Wilder's mental makeup. Because I think... This is going to scar him very, very deeply. Again, because he's been so delusional. When you've got a guy who's more realistic, who is more truthful about who they are. For example, Lennox Lewis, when he fought Hassim Ratman, he got knocked out in the first fight. He came back in the second fight. He told Manny Stewart, his trainer at the time, don't worry about it, Manny. Because Manny was really worried about the rematch. He had a certain conversation with Lennox Lewis where they were sitting down and watching tape of Hassim Ratman. And Manny was really trying to get Lewis to focus on certain things that Ratman does on this particular videotape. And Lewis was kind of dismissive. And he said, Manny, look, it's an easy fight. I know what I've got to do. Don't worry about it. And then he left the room and went out to go play ping pong. And Manny said at that moment, he knew that Lewis was going to win the rematch. Because he knew that his head was in the right place. He understood the mistakes that he made. He understood what Ratman is and or what Ratman was and what he wasn't. Do you understand? So with Deontay Wilder, you know, he is going in there against Tyson Fury in the rematch, and his entire image of himself has been shattered. You see, and this is not a guy like Lennox Lewis, who is a very technically good fighter. Lewis, good on the inside, good on the outside, great punch variety. And he was going up against a Hassim Ratman who was fairly talented, but nowhere near as good as Lewis overall. With Deontay Wilder, the only thing he's got on Tyson Fury is punching power. He doesn't have anything else. And even then, he's only got punching power at long range over Fury. Up close, Fury might throw harder shots. So, and as I say, technically... Fury's better than Deontay Wilder. He's got better balance. He's got a better uh, punch variety. I mean, his jab was better. He was just better in every department. It's only the punching power that Wilder had. Uh, so how is he going to approach that psychologically? It's not just about technically, psychologically. I'm not expecting the same level of confidence from Deontay Wilder going into this third fight that we saw going into the previous two fights. I think his confidence is going to be seriously dented. So, going to be interesting. Um, 
he's been talking to George Foreman. I did a video about that recently. And I think that right there is a good move for Wilder to reach out to somebody like Foreman. And Foreman did say that they've been having conversations about how you get over a loss. So if there is a glimmer of hope for Wilder is that he's now finally stopped being this delusional, arrogant individual. I mean, I'm not saying he's stopped being that guy completely <laughs> because look at all the crazy and insane excuses he's come up with after the loss to Tyson Fury. But, you know, with the passage of time, then talking to people like George Foreman, maybe other people, he realizes he needs something. He needs a different approach, not just technically, not just tactically, but psychologically, you need a different approach. So yeah, that to me is the most fascinating part about it. When it comes to the tactics, I would personally say that Wilder should get somebody like Buddy McGirt on board. Because with Tyson Fury, yes. I mean, it depends on which way he decides to box. Uh, but we know that he can box a variety of different styles, variety of different ways. Wilder just has to concentrate on what he's doing. And I think as limited as Deontay Wilder is, he should start with trying to make himself an elusive target. Once you have a situation where your opponent is not able to hit you or not able to hit you easily, you've got half the battle won. And Wilder's never going to be Floyd Mayweather. But what he is, is a skinny guy, 6'7", you know, tall, long arms. And because he's so light for his height and reach, he can move around the ring quite well when he decides to. It's kind of like AJ when he fought Andy Ruiz. AJ normally doesn't move that much. But against Andy Ruiz, he was all over the ring. Okay? Now, I know Deontay Wilder heavily criticized Anthony Joshua for doing what he did. And maybe because Wilder is such an ignorant individual and he's so prideful, maybe he wouldn't go ahead and be the hypocrite. And I mean, he's, look, he's hypocritical about many things he does, but about that specifically, about running around the ring and using those kind of tactics, maybe he wouldn't want to do that because of the way he attacked Anthony Joshua for using those tactics against Ruiz in the rematch. But I think that's his best bet, to be honest with you. Um, look, it's possible that he just goes in there and puts it on Tyson Fury and lands the right hand. Anything can happen. But if we're talking about probabilities here, I think that the best thing for him to do would be to get Buddy McGirt to move around the ring, make it as awkward for Tyson Fury as possible, try and get Tyson Fury frustrated and train that way. His whole camp train to be moving around the ring from big guys, messing them around, being awkward, being difficult, and then jumping out with sneaky right hands. Remember, he's still got that power. So mess the big guy around, move around the ring, and then all of a sudden, when you got the guy frustrated, come out with a big right hand. That to me, in my mind, would be the tactic or the game plan to go with. And there's no guarantee at all that that would result in victory. But I just feel like that might give him the best chance. He's going to be an underdog either way. Even with those tactics, you're not going to make him favorite. But I just think in order to turn the tables or give himself the best chance of turning the tables, he needs to do something unexpected. But maybe Tyson Fury will be expecting him to get on his bike. I don't know. Um, that's you know, my uh, best assessment of the situation. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Did Tyson Fury take something from Deontay Wilder in that first fight in the 12th round, psychologically? Did he have an impact on him, which Wilder never really got over? And did that play a part in Fury's victory over Wilder in the rematch? Because this is what Ben Davison believes. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. It's happening them out. Join me on Patreon. I upload a minimum of two podcasts every single week, covering a wide variety of controversial topics, as well as live stream Q&A sessions. Take a look on screen right now at some of the podcasts I've produced so far. For just $3 a month, the equivalent of about £2 a month, 
you get access to all my new podcasts and my entire back catalogue of past podcasts, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen on your computer or on your smartphone or tablet by downloading the Patreon app from the Google Play Store or the App Store for free. The Patreon app also allows you to download each podcast in MP3. For less than the price of a cup of coffee, you get access to dozens of hours of exclusive content. It's easy to sign up, there's no contract, and you can cancel at any time. So come and join our community of free and critical thinkers by signing up with me here on Patreon today.